So in this video, I'm going to discuss the levels of sedation. According to the American Society of Anesthesiologists, there are four levels of sedation. I will give you their formal definition and then try to exemplify each level for a better understanding. We'll start with minimal sedation. Minimal sedation is a minimally depressed level of consciousness produced by a pharmacological method that retains the patient's ability to independently and continually maintain an airway and respond normally to tactile stimulation and verbal command. Although cognitive function and coordination may be modestly impaired, ventilatory and cardiovascular functions are unaffected. In accordance with this particular definition, the drug or drugs and our techniques used should cover a margin of safety wide enough never to render unintended loss of consciousness. Further, patients whose only response is a reflex withdrawal from repeated stimuli should not be considered to be in a state of minimal sedation. Another term that's used somewhat synonymously with minimal sedation is anxiolysis, which simply means the diminution or elimination of anxiety. The key concepts with minimal sedation is the ability of the patient to remain in a conscious state. Even though there may be a modest impairment of cognitive ability, they can still respond to you in a normal manner. For example, I can ask them a question or lightly tap them on the shoulder and they can respond. Swallowing reflexes are intact and they have no problem breathing on their own. I'll use some examples of alcohol consumption. I know many of you don't drink, but I think everyone has observed people at different levels of intoxication. Minimal sedation may be equivalent to someone who's had maybe two to three drinks. Obviously, this is hard to quantify because everyone responds differently. This is an important point to remember because the same principle applies to sedative medications. Everyone responds differently. That being said, we can still draw some general conclusions. This individual who's minimally sedated may or may not get a DUI, but they're still able to function in a somewhat normal fashion. Maybe we can say this patient is awake but drowsy. Patients at this level of sedation would be given a drug in an amount equal to or less than the minimal recommended dose as recommended by the FDA for the drug's recommended purpose. For example, triazolam, which is a common oral sedation drug, would only be given in an amount no greater than 0.5 milligrams to an ambulating or walking or unmonitored uh, person. Its intended FDA use would be for insomnia. Moderate sedation. It's a drug-induced level of consciousness during which patients respond purposefully to verbal commands, either alone or accompanied by light tactile stimulation. No interventions are required to maintain a patent airway and spontaneous ventilation is adequate. Cardiovascular function is usually maintained. The key word here is purposeful. The patient responds in a purposeful manner to verbal commands or light tactile stimulation. I can still ask the patient a question or tap them on the shoulder and they can respond but in a purposeful fashion. What does purposeful mean? Again, I'll use an, an example of alcohol consumption. This may be tantamount to someone who's had maybe four to nine drinks. There's quite a bit of variation because everyone responds differently. Factors such as tolerance, absorption, food intake, and metabolism can all affect the influence of alcohol. People also have different levels of susceptibility to the influence of alcohol. Again, the same concept applies to sedative drugs. This person may be asleep but is easily aroused. Their cognitive function is noticeably influenced. They can respond, but they may have to think about what they're saying. All swallowing reflexes are intact, and they have no trouble breathing on their own. This person will be obviously intoxicated, but they're still able to function. They better not drive home. They would endanger themselves and others. They would definitely get a DUI. I think we've all witnessed folks at this level of intoxication. For those of you who've had the pleasure of having a colonoscopy, you probably had moderate sedation. You probably describe it as a pleasant experience in which you remember very little, if anything. In fact, I remember my first colonoscopy. I was really dreading it, thinking how could anyone possibly enjoy that procedure? Well, believe it or not, I enjoyed the procedure. I still remember the doctor 
tapping me on the shoulder and he was pointing to the, the screen. It was being filled, you know, fiber optically, and all I could do was laugh. That was my experience with moderate sedation. It's still considered conscious sedation. Deep sedation is an induced state of depressed consciousness accompanied by partial or complete loss of protective reflexes, including the inability to continually maintain an airway independently and or respond purposefully to physical stimulation or verbal command, as produced by a pharmacological or non-pharmacological method or a combination thereof. The key words here are partial or complete loss of protective reflexes, particularly the swallowing reflex. They may lose the ability to breathe on their own. This person will not respond to verbal command or like touching. You have to shake the person to awaken them or arouse them with a painful stimulus. They're asleep but difficult to arouse. This would be the person who's so intoxicated they passed out. You'd have to literally shake the person to get a response from them. If they were to regurgitate, uh, they could very well asphyxiate on their own vomitus. This is not conscious sedation. Let's go to general anesthesia. That's an induced state of unconsciousness accompanied by partial or complete loss of protective reflexes, including the inability to continually maintain an airway independently and respond purposefully to verbal commands or physical stimulus, and is produced by a pharmacological or non-pharmacological method or combination thereof. The key word here is unconsciousness. The patient cannot be aroused by shaking or by painful stimulus. In fact, you can cut a patient with a scalpel and they won't respond. This is surgical anesthesia. There is a complete analgesia or pain control. Protective reflexes such as swallowing are obviously impaired and the patient may not be able to breathe on their own. This is very obviously not conscious sedation. It is also known as sleep sedation or anesthesia. Conscious sedation is not sleep sedation. This is very important to understand. So I'll join you next when we discuss the routes of administration and the qualifications for sedation. Thank you.